In this video, we're going to go through everything that there is to know about the latest DJI Air 2S. This is a perfect first time buyers or first time owner of any drone in particular, as we're going to go ahead and talk about pretty much everything that there is to know to really get the most out of this device. So put it on the blades. If you notice, they're color coordinated. The little ring right here matches the color, the orange highlight that you see, and you simply place it in like so. And of course, these other ones, the ones without anything, and there you go. That's how you basically set it up. Now, if you have managed to pick up the fly more combo, this little thing literally connects to a battery bank and you attach it like so. And now this little battery can now be used as an external battery bank. In addition to that, the gimbal guard can be easily detached by simply pushing in and pushing outwards, just like so. And to replace it, just match everything with the groove with this little grayed out plastic bit, attach the upper part like so. There you go. That's how you properly equipped and unequipped the gimbal guard. And yes, it's important to remove the gimbal guard before you fly as that could possibly damage the gimbal mortars. You don't want that to happen if it overloads. And that was a fly more package. You do have access to the ND filters, which the ND filters are very easy to place on. I find it easier if you have the drone upside down on a flat surface and you just simply twist like so and it pops out of place and repeat the process. And there you go. Now you are uh, basically a pro when it comes to setting up your DJI Air 2S. Now, once you secure the battery in place on the drum, simply tap on it once. Not only will this indicate, show you the battery life with its LED, it'll indicate the battery life percentage right here. But if you tap on it once and tap and hold, this will start up the drone. Same thing can be done on the controller itself. Simply tap it once to see the battery life percentage with the LEDs and tap on it and hold, it'll turn on the controller. Now you need to download the DJI Fly app to connect your iPhone or any smartphone with the DJI controller to connect to the drone. As soon as you download this, to attach your phone on the controller, simply just extract this, and depending on the connection you're using, the one that's equipped by default is the one with the lightning port for iPhones, but you can swap it with the USB-C, as DJI did provide USB-C and other connectors. Simply retract this part all the way up as high as possible, place your phone in like so, and it just simply clamps into place and just plug in the connecting port. So in the DJI Fly application, there's a couple of crucial things you definitely need to be aware of. The first thing is on the very top corner right here where it says take off, right now it's caution because it's indoors, but in a real life normal situation, I should say, I highly recommend going in here where it says maximum altitude. Change it to 400 feet, so if it surpasses the number that you put, it's gonna prevent the drone from flying over that set number that you place. Now, here in the United States, the FAA prohibits any drone to fly above 400 feet, as anything above 400 feet is aircraft space. But not only that, the maximum distance, you can also set a limit here as well. Now, if you scroll all the way to the very edge, you could remove that entirely, which I highly recommend doing, especially if you're flying the drone and following a vehicle while you're inside the car. Now, a new thing about this application is that the battery life indicator, this circle right here, it actually changes from the home point distance. So it'll actually give you a live estimate on how much battery life will be remaining. If you fly your drone further out, you can visually see how much use your drone actually has to safely make it back. Pretty unique. But in addition to that, you can also tap and it'll actually tell you the information right there. It will tell you the X amount of battery life time that's remaining for the drone to make it back home safely right here. And then next to that, you can see the signal. Right now it's strong. And then you can see the visual sensors, stats, and then the number of satellites that's connected right next to it. Now the circle with the arrow pointing up, that's the auto takeoff. You can use that all the time. If you're not sure how to take off the drone, you can let it take off automatically, or you could just hold the joysticks like this inwards, and this will automatically warm up the mortars and just simply just move the joystick upwards and it will begin flying up. And to land, you could also use the arrow shortcut to let the drone automatically land or you could also move the joystick downwards. It's gonna pause for the sensor to know what you're trying to do. It's gonna understand you wanna land if you continue holding it, and the drone will automatically safely land on its own. So on the control, you have three different modes you can quickly switch from. Cinema. Cinema mode enabled basically just allows you to control the drone super smooth, steady, to give you that cinematic footage that you're looking for. Normal mode. The drone will basically just handle like a normal drone. All your sensors are enabled, so everything works just as well. Then sport mode, all sensors are disabled and this allows you to control your drone a lot more quicker, make aggressive turns and achieve the top speed of 42, which you can possibly go up even faster like I have. 
but a massive warning about having it to sport mode is all the safety sensors are disabled so if you crash you're gonna crash the drone is not gonna take over now you can hand catch this drone manually by literally placing your hand out like so if you want to hand catch your drone if the terrain is unsafe for the drone to land automatically you can just extend your hand all the way but make sure you disable the sensors so you can either put it in sport mode or just tap on this little icon right here and just turn it off completely so all the sensors are disengaged so by simply placing your hand out like so and just move the joystick downwards you can easily hand catch it just make sure you extend your arm all the way so it doesn't hit you so you don't get attacked or injured by the blades now there is a mini icon right here where's the ma google map icon is you could tap on this and this will enlarge the map you have the ability to change it pointing north all the time you may also double tap to make it into a full screen and double tap again with the other screen to minimize it once more and you may also tap this little circle icon with the arrow going up and this will bring up this different mode this is pretty much self-explanatory but i personally prefer using the google maps method you may also minimize it even further down too now right below here is where you can see your speed and altitude and right now i have mine set to imperial if you want to do that too, in case you're here in the United States, tap the little three dot icon on the top right and go down to control and where it says aircraft units, change it to Imperial. And now you get to see the miles per hour speed and all that good stuff. And real quick, it's also important to note that the mini map will actually display nearby aircrafts like air helicopters, airplanes. So you have a better understanding what's around you and to avoid any conflicts. Now to find my drone is also a new feature. You could do this by a couple of different ways. You could find it on the mini map. If you enlarge it, there's a little find my drone icon right here. But you may also do this. If you tap on little dots right above here and where it says safety, scroll all the way down, you'll find a find my drone feature. This will enlarge the mini map and you also have a couple controls right here. One of which allows you to flash and beep the drone. So it will flash, it will utilize its LED lights as well as make that little beeping noise so you can locate it faster. And if you're still having a hard time finding it, you can also select the use other map and it'll take it to the native app that your phone has that you use for turn by turn navigations. Now, right below here, you can find your storage. Uh, here, you can switch between the internal storage or the external storage that you have inserted with the SD card. So you can toggle between those two. Again, the DJI Air 2S has eight gigabytes of internal storage, but available, it only has 7.1 gigs. And then format, you can change the format from JPEG to RAW or JPEG plus raw for your photography needs and your exposure is right here as well. You could adjust this. But what I like to do is simply tap on anything. And if you tap the little sun icon, you could actually adjust it this way as well. I, this is how I like to adjust the exposure levels. And then if you switch to video mode, which you could do by tapping here on the screen or just using the camera switch icon on the remote in video mode down here is where you could select the resolution as well as the frame and the other video settings as well. Now back in the settings side of things by tapping those little dots, there's a couple of interesting things that you have to know about. The first thing is the flight assistance. So right now you have a choice between bypass, brake, or off. Off means all the sensors are obviously turned off. That means there's no safety sensors to prevent the drone from crashing into a wall. Everything is turned off. But then you have the bypass mode, which if you have your drone flying in intelligence mode, which I'll show you more in a little bit what that is. If there's an object or something in front of the drone, and the drone sees an opportunity to be able to avoid it or go around it, it will actually do it by utilizing the sensors so it can safely try to make its way around that the thing that's in the way. Or you can set it to brake, so as soon as the drone detects there's something in front of it, it's just gonna hover there. And then of course you can turn that off completely. I like to do bypass. And down here is where you can actually enable to move the control sticks, make the aircraft go from left to right. So if you see it pausing, you can enable this and you can just steer left or right and you'll make the decision for the drone. Now, if your drone did crash, or if you notice that your drone is acting funny, it's always good to know that you could recalibrate the compass. Maybe the, ca uh, comp the internal compass is out of alignment. You could tap calibrate and just follow the unscreen instructions, and this will calibrate the drone compass so I can fly safely without any issues. If you ever have to recalibrate that, that's where you go to do that. Same goes for the IMU, but that one I rarely touch. Now, the auxiliary lights. This is new for the Air 2S, the Mavic 2, Zoom and Pro also has this, where the bottom LEDs can be toggled on and off. If you leave it on automatic in a dark environment, 
the auxiliary lights will turn on. You may also leave it on all the time by tapping on, or you can have it turned off completely. That's what those auxiliary lights do. But if we quickly switch to controls, and if you go downwards, this is also where you could recalibrate the uh, gimbal if you notice that your gimbal is acting funny. Just tap auto and the gimbal will automatically like recalibrate itself on a flat surface. As long as it's on a flat surface, it'll work perfectly fine. But if you scroll all the way down, oh, this is where you can also find the ability to charge your phone. I highly recommend leaving this on. This way your phone doesn't die mid-flight and you lose track of your drone. And trust me, it doesn't take a lot of juice especially since the internal battery inside the DJI controller is already massive. So there's no concern of it draining the controller battery that quickly. Now, if you scroll down, you could customize the function button. So a single tap right here, you see I have it set to the auxiliary light. So if I tap on it, I could toggle the auxiliary light on and on manually. So if I have a hard time finding my drone in midair, I could always just toggle that light so I could easily spot it while it's in the air. But right below here, by simply double tapping the function key, this will automatically recenter the gimbal quickly on the go on the fly instead of having to use the scroll wheel to position the gimbal to go straight upwards or downwards. But if you tap on here, there's so many other things you could replace the function button to do like toggle maps or live view, switch between follow or PVV mode and so much more. Now as for camera settings, if you go but down in the general tab, I would highly recommend turning this on the holograph. This will basically just show you the graph right here of, of all your important levels. You can also enable the exposure warnings. Basically, it'll just send you a big, it'll just do this. It'll show a massive outline of the areas that you're overexposing. So the less of this, the better. That's how you, you could go ahead and enable that. And you also have the grid lines. You could enable all three or take them off entirely. I like the rule of thirds. Those definitely do help out a lot, especially when you're taking photos. White balance, I like to leave it auto. I can always use software to try to correct it if needed. Other than that, transmission, it's just your transmission signal. Smooth, high definition. I just like to leave it by default. The DJI Air 2S, it's antennas that it has, it's really impressive. You really don't need to do that. And then on the about tab, you can name your aircraft right here. You can also check for updates as well right here. So if you need to manually check for some certain updates, this is where you could go ahead and manually update your device. Now, the controllers. Of course, right here, this allows you to take a photo by simply tapping the shutter button. You could tap on it here. This little icon right here allows you to switch between video or photo mode. You could toggle between auto focus or manual focus. Or you could tap this little square icon to select between smart photos, bursts, photo bursts or video as well. You can select it from this way. Another thing to also know about the controller is that this little button right here, this is uh, your emergency landing. So if you lost track of your drone and you want it to automatically land back where it took off, you can just tap and hold this and the drone will fly its way back and land exactly where it took off. And then the sensors right above here, these orange markers that you see on top and bottom, it basically just indicates that there's an object. So when it's clear, it's perfectly fine. And when you see the orange start to fill up, that means you're getting close to some sort of object. And then this little scroll wheel, of course, this just allows you to position the gimbal however you like it. Now in quick summary, the quick tips and tricks is basically this. If you want to track a subject, simply just use your finger and just make a little outline like this and it'll automatically make a box around that subject. Also keep in mind the resolution has to be tweaked down a little bit. So I had mine set to 4K at 30 FPS. This is a supported one. So spotlight basically will just cover, uh, follow you. Parallel, when you hit record, it's just gonna follow you on the side, hint parallel. So it's gonna give you like a side profile. And then trace will basically just trace you once you hit go. It's just gonna be following you like so. And then point of interest. Basically this is a motion type of thing where you could either control to either go from left to the right and you control the speed by using the little arrow which you could adjust on the spot so you can move around it will continue tracking you now as for the different modes if you actually hit the camera icon the master shots uh, just play with that but quick overview quick shots basically you have the ability to do a dolly a rocket circle and it basically will show you little previews right here on the side so you get an understanding of what kind of footage it's going to capture if you allow the drone to do its thing and of course you got hyperlapse which you can also preview them right there depending on the different mode style that you're looking for waypoints allows you to make multiple markers and then of course you got the pano modes if you want a more further in-depth of this let me know down in the comment section because I could literally spend half an hour on covering this, which is why I kind of sped it up. But that's basically the basics. And to select certain clips that you saved and shot from the SD card from the drone to your smartphone, you can simply tap the little play icon down here. Select the footage or the video that you want to select and simply just save right here. And now it saved that photo 
in its full resolution on your smartphone. And of course, just take off your phone like so, wrap this little cable around and connect it to that little groove so you can properly secure it in place. And then just bring this down and it clicks in like so. And if you wanna make the controller super compact, you can also remove the little joysticks and secure it in place right below here. And there you go. Now you are a pro when it comes to operating your brand new DJI Air 2S. Honestly, overall, this is a very impressive drone. I'm definitely gonna consider taking this a lot more than my Mavic 2 Zoom. If you got some good useful information out of the video, greatly appreciate it if you can leave this video a like. But not only that, make sure you are subscribed as I basically cover a lot of tech videos very similar to this. But in the meantime, if you wish to see more, feel free to go ahead and watch this video over here as that is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. And that video over there, this is a recent video upload. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.